Uh, I'm gonna walk down to that bay over there. They have a workout center, do a little bit of that, and then head to the casino a little later. I'll see you then. I will show you how many I did in my next video. Leave your guess in the comment section below. For this video, the session I played later that day, I filmed while at the casino. I know many of you didn't like that style nearly as much. So here's going to be the last hand that I deliberately try to capture footage at the table using my pocket cam. I raised a 40 for middle position with the button straddle on, where at this casino, under the gun still starts, then action goes to the button, passes over him, the blinds act, and then goes back to the button. In this case, the small blind calls, and the big blind re-raises, committing himself, betting more than half his stack. Button folds, and it's up to me. Pretty much all interfold. Let's see if I have the goods. How much do you have behind? I'm all in. All in. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> Jacks are good. Well, yeah, you'll be better. I don't want to fall like that. Yeah. 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 Can't win them all, I guess. I add on 200 to get back to a full stack. Played for a decent while longer and filmed for pretty much no reason since I didn't show it to you. I got in the game for 1200 and got out for 1200 and won. Did I tip the cashier 100% of my winnings? No. Now on a totally unrelated note, off to my biggest putt ever, which was 4000 Outlaws Casino in a Tascadero when it was an alternating game of PLO and Hold'em, both 5-5. Five five. Not much analysis to get into. After this hand is when I'll go over the four pocket nines I had when I played Hold'em in a different day session. I have King Jack of Spades and 8-5 of Hearts in the big blind in a six-way limped pot. Not a bad hand, but not a great one either, I don't think. Until the flop which gives us the nuts with jack-8, a hard flush draw with 8-5, and a higher gut shot with king-jack. I'm no PLO expert, but I think that's pretty good. Small blind checks, I check. In my limited experience playing PLO, players seem to overestimate their hands and bet, so I'm going for the check raise, which I know is coming. A player bets, then a player in the cutoff announces pot. The small blind then also announces pot. Didn't really care enough to have the dealer count it. I announced pot as well to make it an essential all-in. The original better folds. Cut off who has less than me calls. He started the hand with a little less than a thousand, I think. And then the small blind who covers me puts me all in for a little bit more for a side pot, and I call. The turn pairs the board. Not good. Then the river gives us the higher gut shot. I turn my hand over. And the cutoff basically just had the nuts with jack-8 with not much else. And the small blind had a higher straight draw to go along with his nut flush draw. I win! A pot with a little over 4k in it, and I luckily scoop it all. Looking at the equities on the flop, about even, which I think happens a lot in PLO. All that, like $40 in the middle, was the pot, including the first player's bet of 15 Then the pot bet from the cutoff was around 60 The small blind pot bet was around 250 And my pot bet was around 1000 Small blind and I go all in for a little bit more. You can give me an over-under on the tip I left for this pot, giving you a hint, though, that it was indeed more than zero. Now off to the original hand analysis with share my pair for these four hands of pocket nines, each within the first 45 minutes of my 5-5 session at Central Coast Casino in Grover Beach. Under the gun open raise and get three bet by the next player, I make the call, getting decent odds with a decent hand. 
I am actually the shortest stack at the table with a max buy-in up to the biggest stack, which you can easily see can make these games huge. I flop an over pair, and the Razor could make our life difficult, but he checks back. Turn is a king, which is likely to hit him, and it also completes the flush when I have a club in my hand. He bets half pot, and I make the call. Pretty close, but seems like the right play. Could have the best hand or the best draw, both or neither. The river is a fourth club, making our flush, and I check. Tough spot again, I could get into, but he makes our life easy, checks it back, and we take it down. In this next hand, I thought I would just show both hands during the entire replay, because I was very surprised to see his hand. He raises from the cutoff, flat by me is fine, but on the button to a cutoff raise, a three bed does seem better. Flop is decent with two hearts, 10 high. He checks and I bet for value with a little protection for 100 and he calls. With a naked ace king here, I just think you gotta fold it, which truly shows the power of position. Turn is a five. And after he checks, I decided to check it back. I could have gone for a mergey type of bet, but I go for pot control. River is a blank, and the villain bets $230. I don't understand this bet looking at his holding, as he is turning his hand into a bluff. Getting to the river this way, I think the check, hopefully, when it showdown is the best line. Now, from my perspective at the table... The first thing I think about in these situations is will a worse hand bet for value? If I can name one, then it's simply a call. Pocket eights is the next worst hand in this case, and I don't think it would bet for value. Then I would think about what value hands is he representing. Pretty much pocket sevens for sure plays this way, or slow played sets on the flop, which I think is less likely. Maybe pocket jacks or queens, but also less likely. Then it's a question of all the tens in his range with those bet here. I think he would just go for a check call. I felt there were more than enough bluffs with Miss Flush Draws. As you can see with his hands, there's just crazy amounts. I make the call and hear what every poker player loves hearing. Good call. A little bit of deja vu here with the same player in the first hand three betting me. Again, an early position for both of us, and heads up. Not a horrible flop with one over card, but without the power position, I can't take the heat, so I get out of the kitchen. The button straddle is on, and at this casino now, it starts on the small blind, which is where I am at. This is such a tough spot normally, being in the worst position post-flop, but now it's pre-flopped as well. Basically, doesn't even make it fair. Let me know how you would divide your range here, but for me, I'm just limping my entire continuing range. We get a raise from the low jack. I call, along with the limper. Again, not very fair being out of position post-flop now, but feel this hand is too strong to fold. Especially now, top set on a super dry flop, facing a $130 bet. I remember specifically because the pre-flop raiser announced one of each. 100 plus 25 plus 5 is 130. I make the easy call. Want to keep the other player in. Not scared of any turn cards. Hard to find a bluff I would raise here. And many over pairs. The player in position is going to continue on the turn. The third player also calls. And we see an ace that brings in backdoor diamonds. With 600 in the pot, I'm looking to check raise all in. Only losing to pocket aces from the original raiser or 4-3 suited if the limper is crazy loose. Action checks through, though, and the river is a 6, which now completes 8-7. Pretty unlikely, I think. I go for the check raise again. Button might have been checking back with an ace, or the other player, if you think about it, has a really good bluff spot, because I shouldn't have that great a hand here. The action is better than we could have imagined, with a bet of 400 and a call. 600 left for me. I go all in. The next player calls with the next folding. I hear higher set. Yes, indeed. Deuces thought they loved the flop. 
but the cooler goes my way this time. A 3K pot, and I didn't move much from that stack throughout the night, profiting 2340. Lastly, to end the video in the spirit of this action packed vlog, I will leave you with another big pot I played online at WSOP.com when I was in New Jersey. It was the biggest pot I ever played at the time, and the biggest online as of now I have ever played. No analysis is needed, because as in most big pots, it was just a huge cooler. Both players just couldn't get away from their hand.